18 because there's no cover for him from out there and he's very keen on the way down towards the start. Al Karim Hubbard tends to go forward. So we break away Al Karim and Subjectivist from those wide out gates immediately move forward. My Frankel and Trawlerman also handy. The grey silver solid closer to the running rail with Nate the Great adopting a handy position but it is Subjectivist gradually edging over and the grey silver sonic for Japan who cut out the early running. Racing in third place, Mai Frankel with Trawlerman in the Godolphin Blue and Nate the Great. Then behind these enemy, Al Karim cannot get in and can't get to the front either with Sisfahan. Master Gatsby is already four lengths off the back end, may have missed the break with Get Shirty just ahead of him and Ect. Pin your hopes about four from the back and Big Call likewise. So Subjective is back on the race course, bounding enthusiasm as he turns into the home straight for the first time. Leads by over a length from Trawlerman for Frankie Dottori in the Godolphin Blue and the Grey Horse on the running rail, Silver Sonic for Japan. In fourth place, my Frankel in the red jacket, just ahead of in fifth enemy. Then behind these, they have the German derby winner, Sis Bahan, who continues to race in sixth with Al Kahim racing in seventh place. Behind Al Karim, uh, we have Big Call, who is towards the back of the field early on in company with Ect Get Shirty. And last of all is my Frank, uh, so on the outside of my Frankel is Master Gatsby. So passing in front of us, Subjectivist has settled pretty well in front, leads by a length, Trawlerman in second place as the leader just tries to get a breather, at least Joe Fanning does, I don't think the horse is that uh, obliging, he is pleased to be back and he leads Trawlerman away from the stands with Silver Sonic in third, My Frankel races in fourth place with Enemy racing in fifth, Nate the Great is in sixth in the noseband just ahead of Sisfan, also nosebanded, Al Karim comes next from Pin Your Hopes, then behind these big call, Get Shirty, Ect and still last of all but closer to the main body of the field is Master Gatsby. So Subjectivist has led them through the first circuit. Leads by nearly two lengths. Trawlerman, Frankie Dottori, not going to give him too much rope this afternoon. Racing in second place, just ahead of my Frankel, who's taken third from Silver Sonic, who is a neck away on the rails. Behind these, Enemy and Nate the Great fill the next two places with Al Karim. Sisfahan comes next with Pin Your Hopes, and Master Gatsby just passing a couple at the tail with Get Shirty and Ect, and Big Call is also in that rear group of five as well. So, Subjectivist on the front end, what will he find in the closing stages? Leads by a length from racing in second place as they exit the back straight, Trawlerman. My Frankel on the outside of Silver Sonic. Enemy still travels strongly in fifth place on the inside of Nate the Great. Al Karim on the outside of Sisfahan, who makes ground up the inside. Master Gatsby continues to pick them off. Pin Your Hopes is taking a brave route as Subjectivist is now just asked to stretch as they make their way inside the final 600. Trawlerman pushed along. My Frankel up on the outside loom. Silver Sonic pulls out Enemy for Ian Williams, breaks cover with Richard Kingscott, improves quickly on the inside running rail, Subjectivist has gone, it is Silver Sonic who leads down the outside comes Enemy, My Frankel next Trawlerman, and on the inside, Big Call pin your hopes a bit short of room, 200 to travel, Enemy out after Silver Sonic, who still has the lead, and it's a length and a half, and it's growing, Silver Sonic is about two lengths clear from Enemy, gets shirty, rattling home on the inside Silver Sonic, Super Sonic in the Long Jeans Red Sea handicap Enemy second, gets shirty, may have grabbed third with Nate the Great involved as well with Big Call, Sisbahan, pin your hopes Trawlerman dropped away, Subjectivist likewise, Master Gatsby never really got out of last, Ect was always in that rear division as well. Two horses came to the fore with 200 metres to travel Silver Sonic for Japan, an enemy for Richard Kingshut and the UK and Ian Williams, but it was Silver Sonic for Damien Lane and Yatsutoshi Iki who had won the day, won pretty comfortably in the end, two lengths and probably going away from enemy. Thought Get Shirty may have got third on looking at that, Big Call's given himself a real chance, that's very close for third and fourth, and Nate the Great was next Sisbahan across the line, then Ect Pinya hopes Trawlerman didn't last home, and uh, behind those we had the likes of My Frankel who loomed up and looked a threat, but it's Damien Lane home in front on Silver Sonic, another for Japan. Five high-class European stayers in a bunch, one much better Japanese one far in advance of them. Silver Sonic was brilliant today and has won really decisively he takes the Longines Red Sea Turf handicap Japanese horse Japanese bred Australian ridden by Damien Lane coming right away one of the few in the race to run kindly throughout of a stop start tempo dictated by the folding subjectivist and it's Japan who win again sprinters stairs whatever they get the job done they won it last year with Stay Foolish as well, so they're going to be going back-to-back -back years here. And I think the trend on the night, Nick, has certainly been horses that are cutting back in distance are able to stay 
in this particular night. For whatever reason it is, that's what we've seen. That's been the trend so far. Uh, Silver Sonic coming off of a victory going two and a quarter miles last time and was more than fit enough. Well, you've got long straights here. Mm -hmm. Races, even if they're run at a sedate tempo, mm -hmm. they start to unfold early. Jockeys go early, they commit. But Damian Lane was cool enough and this horse has had too much. At oh, one stage, it looked as though Enemy was going to deliver the decisive challenge under Richard Kingscote, but he just lacked this horse's foot. I'm glad that you mentioned Damian Lane because I think he was a key co component of this horse being able to be victorious. If you go back to the start uh, when we had Subjectivist be pretty keen, there was another horse on the front end. This horse was very keen in behind horses, and I think that he really wanted to go on. And it, it took Damian Lane a, a couple of furlongs to get him where he was settled and relaxed. When they came down the stretch the first time, that was the point that you could really see when Subjectivist was his head towards the rail, this horse was so relaxed. So for many decades now, Japan has had a, a love affair, dare I say it, an obsession. It's certainly an unrequited love for the pre de Triomphe, a race they've never managed to win, but have been second in many times. This horse's pedigree is all art. By Orfevre, out of a mare by Tony Bin. Here is Ollie Bell alongside the winning rider. Yeah, the Aussie Damien Lane alongside me, Michelle, you was just saying you seem to have a job on your hands settling him today. Was that how it felt underneath you? He was on and off. He had a little bit of tightening from the outside, which he didn't really appreciate. So he got in the chewy a couple of times, which is not unusual for him. Um, but he still was able to finish off strong. And given his form over 3-6, when he kicked clear, there was no doubts about him getting home. Yeah, and, he, and he's got a good turn of foot for a stay. So... I knew if I got the run, he was going to be really competitive. I was just um, sweating on it there for a couple of hundred metres. Just finally, more generally, we've seen Japan have such tremendous success globally in recent years. How important is it for that to continue on the, the stage we're at today? Oh, very important. I mean, I love their racing. Their horses are top quality, and they now are showing that to the world, and it's just a privilege to be a part of that. Might not be done yet. You're in the Saudi Cup. Best of luck, Damien. Well done here. Thank you. Cool-headedness has won the day for Damien Lane. A Silver Sonic has had plenty in reserve, owned by the Shaddai Racehorse Company Limited and trained by Yatsutoshi Ike. Silver Sonic has won the Red Sea Turf handicap, and it was very much uh, Prince Bandar's ambition when he created this event that he would produce an undercard or a supporting card of races that, that perhaps didn't have the representation elsewhere and, and making this a handicap, tying it in with great races like the Melbourne Cup and the, the Ebor at York, it very much has a, has a place in the calendar. It certainly does. I love the fact that we see some different races than you tend to see on these big days. Otherwise, you end up with the exact same horses over and over because of the varying distances and like you mentioned, the handicap aspect of it. What we see are different horses stepping forward and putting up efforts like we've seen two spectacular efforts tonight at the very least. And Damien Lane will be on Crown Pride in the Saudi Cup later. Reunited. Reunited with Crown Pride. Crown Pride who set a blistering gallop in the Kentucky Derby <laughs> last year but has bounced back off those uh, exploits to, to put some pretty good efforts together. And Damien Victorian won his first Group 1 race back in 2014 and has ridden over 1,200 winners, 21 at the very highest level. But his association with Japan has been a fruitful one and has ridden for them in some of the world's biggest races at home and abroad.